Okay, here we are. We're still at Spingold Theater. You can see this is where I'm directing Comedy of Errors with the twins. Both sets of identical twins here at Brandeis. Now, we're in um, Act 3, Scene 4. We're going to do this kind of amid the parking lot, I think. <laughs> oh, Lorraine, say, what mean our men to fly? <laughs> Turn the page over. Our number is far greater than our foes. The garrison of Genoese, my lord, that came from Paris, weary of their march, grudging to be suddenly employed, no sooner in the forefront took their place, but straight retiring, so dismayed the rest, as likewise they betook themselves to fight, in which, for haste to make a safe escape, more on the clustering throng are pressed to death than by the enemy, a thousandfold. O oh, hapless fortune! Let us yet essay if we can counsel some of them to stay. Enter King Edward and Audley. Lord Audley. Whilst our son is in the chase, withdraw our powers unto this little hill, and here a season let us breathe ourselves, I will, my lord, sound a retreat. Just dooming heaven, whose secret providence to our gross judgment is inscrutable, how are we bound to praise thy wondrous works, that hast this day given way unto the right, and made the wicked stumble at themselves. I will, my lord. Sound retreat. Rescue King Edward. Rescue for thy son. Rescue Artois? What, is he prisoner? Oh, by violence fell beside his horse? Neither, my lord, but narrowly beset with turning Frenchmen whom he did pursue. As tis impossible that he should scape, esca except your highness presently descend. Tut, let him fight. We gave him arms today, and he is laboring for our knighthood man. Enter Darby. The prince, my lord, the prince, oh, succor him, he's close encompassed with a world of odds. Then will he win a world of honor, too. If he by valor can redeem him, and him thence, if not, what remedy? We have more sons than one to comfort our declining age. Enter Audley. Renowned and Edward, Edward, give me leave, I pray, to lead my soldiers where I may relieve your grace's son in danger to be slain. The snares of French, like emmets on a bank, muster about him whilst he, lion-like... Entangled in the net of their assaults, frantically rends and bites the woven toil. But all in vain he cannot free himself. Oddly, content, I will not have a man on pain of death sent forth to succor him. This is the day, ordained by destiny, to season his courage with those grievous thoughts, that if he breaketh out, Nestor's years on earth will make him savor still of this exploit. Ah, but he shall not live to see those days. Why, then, his epitaph is lasting praise. Yet, good my lord, tis too much willfulness to let his blood be spilt that may be saved. Exclaim no more, for none of you can tell whether a borrowed aid will serve or no. Perhaps he is already ta slain or tain. And dare a falcon when she's in her flight, and ever after she'll be haggard-like. Let Edward be delivered by our hands, and still in danger he'll expect the like. But if himself, himself, redeemed from thence, he will have vanquished cheerful death and fear, and ever after dread their force no more than if they were but babes or captive slaves. O oh, cruel father! Farewell, Edward, then. Farewell, sweet prince, the hope of chivalry. Oh, would my life might ransom him from death, but soft, methinks I hear the dismal charge of trumpets loud retreat. All are not slain, I hope, that went with him. Some will return with tidings, good or bad. Enter Prince Edward in triumph, bearing in his hand his shivered lance, and the body of the King of Bohemia, born before, wrapped in the colors. They run and embrace him. Oh, joyful sight! Victorious Edward lives! Welcome, brave prince, welcome, Plantagenet. The prince kneels and kisses his father hand, father's hand. First, having done my duty as beseemed, Lords, I regret you with all my hearty thanks. Regreet. Lords, I regret you with all my hearty thanks. And now behold, after my winter's toil, my painful voyage on the boisterous sea of war's devouring gulfs and steely rocks, I bring my fraught unto the wished port, my summer's hope, my travel's sweet reward. And here with humble duty I present this sacrifice, this first fruit of my sword, cropped and cut down, even at the gate of death, The king of Bohem, father, whom I slew, whose thousands had entrenched me round about, and lay as thick upon my battered crest, as on an anvil with their ponderous glove, glaives, glaives. Yet marble, color, yet marble courage still did, un, still did underprop, and when my weary arms, with often blows, like the continual laboring woodman's axe that is enjoined to a fell, 
that is enjoined to fell a load of oaks began to falter. Straight I would recover my gifts you gave me and my zealous vow, and then new courage made me fresh again, that in despite I carved my passage forth and put the multitude to speedy flight. Lo, thus hath Edward's hand filled your request, and done, I hope, the duty of a knight. Aye, well thou hast deserved a knighthood, Ned, and therefore with thy sword yet reeking warm, with blood of those that fought to be thy bane. Arise, Prince Edward, trusty knight at arms. This day thou hast confounded me with joy and proved thyself fit heir unto a king. Here is a note, my gracious lord, of those that in this conflict of our foes were slain. Eleven princes of esteem, four score barons, a hundred and twenty knights, and thirty thousand common soldiers, and of our men, a thousand. Our God be praised. Now, John of France, I hope thou knowest King Edward for no wantonness, no lovesick cockney nor his soldiers' jades, but which way is the fearful king escaped? Towards Poitiers, father, and his sons. Ned, thou and Audley shall pursue them still. Myself and Darby will to Calais straight, and there be girt that haven town with siege. Now lies it on an upshot. Therefore strike and whistly follow whiles the game's on foot. What picture's this? A pelican, my lord wounding her bosom with her crooked beak, that so her nest of young ones might be fed with drops of blood that issue from her heart. The motto, Sic et Vos, and so should you.